Anybody having having any challenges? I'm gonna start calling on people. <laughs> All right, Assad, what challenges are you guys are you currently facing in your business today? Uh, my only challenge is just uh, sequencing. You know, my uh, my efforts and my energy is in you know where to put what, um, and what needs higher priority and what doesn't. Um, so that's pretty much it's more of an existential crisis than anything. <laughs> existential crisis. That's great. It's it's you know real estate agent shit. You know, so like, hey, you can do this or you can do that. There's fifty million different things to do, but what can I do or what should I be doing that will allow me to set up the the goal in the in the best way instead of just you know. Uh, having like a scatter shot approach. I understand. Um, what leads you to money first? That's how I focus all of my activities. Is whatever leads me to money first, or whatever leads me to basically, I focus on at least being able to pay my bills. So whatever activity uh, leads me to that, and then uh, that pretty much fills up my day right now. And then I'll get to a point where it no longer does. Um, and then I'll start working on bigger things. But primarily, what leads me to money first is how I kind of prioritize things for me, at least. Thanks. Can you give me an example of uh, something that you're, you know, trying to figure out what to sequence? Um. So it's it's essentially in my business right now or my business approach. There's. I like different activities that I need to do to generate business, right? And uh, some of them I just don't want to do because that's not where I want to be in the in the future. But it's you know I can make money from doing that. However, I personally believe that you put energy into the um, things that give you um, passion, or you know. <clears throat> or where you're ultimately best suited. So that's kind of the conundrum. It's like, okay, I can um, do the cold calling, which I uh, have been doing. I've had some like initial success. There's door knocking, which I can do as well, but just have always had a hesitation towards doing that um, specifically. Um, so those are kind of, couple of the struggles I'm dealing with at the moment. I get it, man. Um, I've seen you at open houses and you are amazing. You are able to not only uh, engage with people and keep them engaged, but you're able to close. Um, I, I know that open houses take a little bit more time, but um, I would also suggest putting that on your radar because from what I've seen, I remember, I remember you at Harwell with those agents, those clients, and then you ended up closing, closing them. I'm pretty sure as those people that I, uh, I watched you convert, you closed them in El Cajon, I think. Right. Yeah. So uh, I would put that on your radar as well, dude. You're a gangster at converting people at open houses. Uh, and that, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that also fulfills you. I don't want to speak for you, but you seem pretty happy doing it. I could be wrong, well, though. You could be a really good no, salesman. Dude, it, it's, you know, I, I love being able to help people and share information. I, I hate chasing after people, you know? So that's, yeah, that's, that's the biggest conundrum, you know? Yeah. You speak very well, Asad, you know? You really do. Thanks, CJ. Um, we are uh, so, we are in a chase after people business. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's I, a big part of the business. Yeah. Can I say though, you know, three years into farming in Sarah Mesa, people do come to me now. Um, I still put feelers out there. I put little like you know baits on a hook, um, but people do come to me now, and so the farming does really help establish that reputation in that business um, it's just going to take a little bit of time um, while you do everything else so that's the beauty of farming is like it's something i just have growing in the background while i'm doing my day-to-day -day, the open houses and all the other stuff um, 
and I do get, you know, probably every other month I'll probably get a uh, listing lead or something like that uh, right now from farming. And my goal is to get that every single month. Right now I'm working towards getting 12 listings a year from farming. So there is that as well. Um, and dude, if you want to come in and sit down, we can talk about how to make your phone ring instead of make other people's phone ring. Appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. All right. Next up, CJ, what challenges are you currently facing in your business today? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm just in the scaling mode and scaling has always been, I think the most I've done it a few times now. Um, it's always the hardest part of the business in my opinion. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at right this very second. And, you know, the competent people putting, putting trust in people that that's really hard for me because you're letting go in a sense. And, yep. and so I'm, I'm really on actively looking for some very key positions in my company. That's taking up a lot of my time, a little bit of babysitting and, <laughs> and some, and some scaling. I had to start uh, a new team in Ireland for this company that I was doing software development ma uh, project management for. And uh, when you're so disconnected from people from time zone and geographic location, the only way you can really track people is having consistent, well, building rapport with them first. So I went to Ireland and like met the team and stuff like that. And they came to San Diego. Um, but uh, that was the first thing is building rapport with them. And I did that strategically. And then the second thing is uh, creating uh, kind of a program where these people have to like uh, meet specific, um, we call them key performance um, indicators or KPIs or OKRs. Um, okay. So, and we would, we would meet with them literally every three weeks before the end of the month and see where they're at with things. Uh, we would have m uh, Monday Monday and Wednesday meetings with them, um, but that's, it was a lot. It, like, you don't need to do all this, um, but having specific things that were written down at the beginning of the project and then following up on that until the end of the project, like six months in, um, building that rigor created a sense of accountability that um, really got them motivated, but also, uh, held them accountable and made them realize, okay, this is what I need. This is my clear path to finishing this project. Um, I don't know if that's helpful, but it definitely made working with somebody that was remote uh, a lot easier for me because I was able to kind of speak to management and explain to them, hey, this is what these people are doing. And it also kept them in line with, uh, or kept them on track, not even in line, but kept them on track with their goals. I don't know if that helps. It does. It does. I just, it's, it's a, it's a very interesting little piece that it's, it's hard to explain because it's the people that you're looking for are, you know, they're, they're still in the construction field, but they haven't, maybe you see the potential in them to be more than what they are and trying to guide them to become better is really difficult. It's really difficult. And sometimes you're just going to have to be like, yeah, I don't think that, you're going to rise to that occasion. And those are tough decisions too. Yeah, it's a tough place to be. You're also dealing with a certain level of like, um, people are happy where they're happy, you know, and they don't want to move forward or grow beyond where they're operating. For sure. And I'm more of like, let's fucking risk it. Let's go. You know what I mean? Put it in. Let's... People are really happy with where they are sometimes. That's a scary yeah. for me. Scary. Whatever. I also use Trello. I don't know how much this can help you, but I use Trello a lot. Um, I use it for real estate pro team and I use it for listed by David. That has completely transformed my business in terms of being able to like follow through with things and follow up with things as well. So if you want me to show you how to use it or kind of show you how I use it, let me know. Yeah, I'm going to, I need to pick your brain tomorrow about uh, the door hangers too anyway. So I'll see you after the meeting in the office. Okay, cool. All right. Next up, Stephanie, what challenges are you currently facing in your business? Um, I think currently it's just want to get uh, the project 
them because it's uh, out of state. So it's out, feel a little bit out of my hand. And you're just trusting people um, for them to do the job that they're supposed to do. Um, that That's a little bit tough because I like hand on. Um, but so far it's been doing, they've been doing the job. It's just slower than I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, but so far it's, it's, it's okay. It's not too bad. Just I'm okay. a little more eager. Um, another thing is I would like to, uh, I have our state investment and I, I'm looking out to other states for other investments. Um, I think with a high interest rate environment, I just don't know where I could invest. Um, locally, it's just a little bit tough with the cash flow. So finding investment that actually um, for holding cash long term, flow. it seems yeah. really tough right now. Have you ever read the book? Um, oh, my God, what's it called? Uh, I think it's called like out of state investing techniques by bigger pockets. Not the book itself, no, but I heard about it. I have it in my office, actually. I think it's in my bedroom. Um, but you should take a look at it. It's it's pretty amazing at helping you. They have a good formula for identifying good rental markets to invest in. It is though so tough. You can't really fight against high interest rates right now. Yes, and I feel like um, it doesn't seem like a lot of people in San Diego like to invest out of state. Is it is it most people seem to look for the appreciation than the cash flow? What do you see? Appreciation here is pretty significant. Um, and then a lot of San Diegans, like Andrew, for example, have the mindset of, at least investors like Andrew, um, have the mindset of, is there a better, is there a deal better than the deal that I'm looking at out of state between here and there? And if they look at their income calculations and what they can cost seg and how much of a safer investment it is, uh, oftentimes, uh, though it may not cash flow, uh, what they can do with the equity growth and potentially the rental growth here is um, a little bit bigger than what they can do out of state. And out of state investing without a great team behind you there um, can get can pretty much take over as a full time job. Does that make sense? Yes, I understand what you mean. Definitely have a good people is a big difference. Um, so when you talk about look at the cost segregation, is it actually a way or a formula that you Andrew or you use to to compare them or someone? There's some resource I could look at. Um, to compare out of state versus here. Yeah. Um, David mentioned. I, okay, we look at the cost segregation. Um, yeah. The so like, of, I don't. I don't compare against outside of San Diego, so I don't know how to compare it because I just haven't. I don't go for outside of San Diego because I don't care about the cash flow. If that makes sense. Um, I am strictly. I'm not trying to make investments now that make money today. I want obviously the cost segregation. I want all these tax benefits. I want to make money, but I'm not focused on that exactly. Um, my goal is in five years, 10 years, 20 years, where I'm at with those investments because of um, the long-term investment, because I saw so many people when I started that had held property for so long and all they did was get through a few years of it being rough and it turned out to be amazing. Um, so that's the way I've done it myself. Um, I did, I'll say I looked at some investments in, uh, Carol in Northern Carolina. And, um, when I looked at them, I was like, Oh, they're cool. Like they, I can buy them for cheap and they make decent money. But if anything goes wrong or there's an insurance issue or something like that, I can lose all of that profit quickly and I'm not gaining appreciation. So say I have, you know, my AC go out and I'm making 
15 grand on this property a year. AC goes out and I spend 10,000 to do new AC. Well, I'm going to make $5,000 and the property didn't appreciate. So I'm like, well, am I really making that money? Where here, you know, I have an AC go out, I spend 10 grand to fix it. Um, but my property went up 30,000 still that year. And maybe I made, you know, three or $4,000 in cash flow. Um, and I'm negative there, but I still made it up in appreciation. So that's, that's how I've approached it. And it's not a way a ton of people do it, but my goal is to grab and hold as much highly appreciating property as possible and let it do it, let it do its thing while I'm working and making money other ways. Hmm. That makes sense. Especially you, you have a high income and also have a lot of assets. Already. Yeah. So if for someone that doesn't have a lot of in high income or doesn't have a lot of assets, then they have to start somewhere. Then where, well, I, where yeah, so I started with flipping and then I took those profits and parlayed them into assets. So the one, the one thing I didn't do is buy cars, watches and uh, expensive suits. <laughs> so I, I went the other way for most people. And I was like, I don't I don't want to enjoy this money i'm gonna say air quotes enjoy this money right now i'm just gonna keep reinvesting until it makes its own money and that's like that's why i started with flipping um yeah. so that, that was my approach so it's there's put it this way there's no easy answer and it really kind of just depends on where you're at i do think like obviously you can make a ton of money in out of state um property i just don't i just don't know it well mm. got it I do know some people that do invest pretty heavily out of state. I'm happy to put you in touch with them. You can pick their brain and get their uh, perspective on things. Yeah. Yeah. Especially right now. I don't know where they invest, where people invest now. Okay. Thank you. But, yeah, of course. I'll put so you in touch with my friend, David. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, if I may, if there's cities that you're thinking about investing in, um, one of the things you can do is just try to connect with some of the, uh, um, the RIAs in those city and whatever like asset class you're looking at, try to get some more insight from people who are actively investing in those areas. You know, so like oh, okay. if you, if it's, if it's um, like Phoenix, for example, maybe see if there's anything virtual that you can uh, tap into and, and connect with people there and, and try to get their insights. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some people I know that love investing in Pittsburgh for some reason or Gary, Indiana, you know, um, everyone mm -hmm. has their, their reasons and their techniques. And, you know, you might get some more uh, information and insight from doing it that way. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right, guys, we're a little bit over time. Does anybody have any other challenges they want to share before we call it a day? Sorry, we didn't get to everybody. All right, guys. We have an exciting week planned for you. We have Brew RE this uh, Wednesday here at the office. Uh, we are buying drinks for everybody and debuting our office. It's kind of like an office warming Brew RE. Um, that's happening this Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. in Mission Valley. Um, Andrew, what's the real estate cheat codes we have scheduled for this week? Uh, it's the uh, Spruce Canyon Landings walkthrough on Thursday from 5 to 7. I am really excited for that. Andrew built three custom luxury town, uh, not townhomes, single family homes in Mission Hills, and they have amazing views. They're pretty much finished. Uh, this is probably the last time we'll be able to show them because they are in escrow. Um, so uh, if you guys can, please come through this Thursday at 5.30 p.m., 1033 West Spruce Street, 92104, uh, 103. Um, and then finally, do we have something this Saturday, Andrew, or no? No, we, we have no Saturday events this month. We do them during the week. Got it. Okay, cool. Anyways, uh, we also obviously have Walk the Walk Wednesday and uh, Throwback Thursday, I believe. So we'll be seeing you guys for any one of those to find more of our events, realestatecheatcodes.com. See you guys next time.